Hello, I'm Dr. Hossam Mahmoud, Regents as Behavioral Health Medical Director. We are joined today by Dr. Allison Smith, the Medical Director at Boulder Care, for a conversation on the opioid epidemic during COVID, the effects of stigma, and some of the treatment options available for addiction. Dr. Smith, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's um, talk about the state of the opioid epidemic. Why is this something that you and I and, and everyone should be should be talking about today? I would say, unfortunately, it looks like any progress that we've made towards the healing and towards outcomes related to opioid use disorder and the opioid epidemic were really halted um, and scenarios really worsened because of the pandemic. Um, so much of what has propelled the opioid epidemic forward has been a lack of treatment, um, the isolation of having the disease itself. And both of these obviously are much more prevalent in the pandemic. Um, as for why we should care about it, it's really universal. Um, though it definitely disproportionately affects certain groups, it's kind of an equalizer as far as the lives that it can claim and the chaos and destruction that it can bring to people's lives. And it's a generational crisis, meaning that the people that are affected are parents and their children alike, and successful treatment for one individual will affect generations to come. Yeah, thank you for that. And, and uh, what we have noticed uh, as well is an increase in, in substance use rates because of the stress and on the other hand, the disruption in, in access to care. Um, in fact, the latest data from the CDC suggests uh, a significant increase in overdose deaths um, over the past year. Um, in this context, it is so important to identify opioid use disorder early. So what are key indicators that you, a friend or a family member, might be struggling with opioid use? Yeah, I think it's really important to remember that um, it's really normal and expected to become dependent on opioids when they're used regularly and over time. Um, and that's different from a use disorder. Uh, but you might be developing a use disorder if you find that you've lost control over how much or how often you're taking opioids, or you find yourself thinking more about opioids than other things in life, um, like planning how you'll get them or when you'll take your next dose, and that that's kind of overwhelming other, other things that normally are important to you, um, or that you're using them in spite of negative consequences, and that's really key. Um, this idea that in spite of, you know, relationship problems and trouble at work or physical complications that you continue to use opioids, these are all signs of what we call an opioid use disorder. So physically, you might notice that people have trouble staying awake or alert. Um, you might notice that people, you know, are, are struggling with withdrawal, that they're sick, um, that they're you know, struggling with the physical symptoms of um, needing opioids more frequently. Um, people start to, like I mentioned, the, these consequences start coming up. They struggle with relationships, they struggle with work. Um, and, and a lot of times that's kind of the later downstream effect. Um, but, but that's when people start to want to seek help or when they're most open to offering help. And so when we think about seeking care, what barriers come to mind that might prevent someone from seeking treatment? I think there's a lot of reasons someone might avoid seeking care or might not be able to seek care. Um, first, someone might not be ready. Uh, and that's a really difficult one to accept, especially as a loved one or family member of somebody struggling with an opioid use disorder. Um, someone might not be ready to make a change and you kind of have to just wait and be there with them until they are. Um, another reason that someone might not be able to seek uh, treatment is that there might not be the right resources available to them in the community that they live, or they might not be accessible to them based on finances or transportation, other pieces like that. Um, and then I would say the, the third big reason is probably um, stigma, uh, the fear of how they might be treated if they do end up seeking care. Um, and that's a that's a big force keeping people from seeking treatment. Yeah, 
And we uh, at CreateGens have really identified these challenges early on and have been working very closely with our partners to uh, work on the early identification and treatment of substance use disorders, including opioid use disorder. And um, telehealth solutions have been a significant component of the solutions that we offer um, to try to help our members overcome these barriers and, and make uh, accessing treatment less burdensome. Um, and, and hopefully try to bypass that stigma factor that you mentioned. Um, tell us about the resources and treatment options that are available to help folks who are struggling with addiction. I think treatment thankfully comes in a lot of forms. Um, and so people can choose what seems right for them or what seems doable. Um, it, this may mean like a mutual support group or meetings, counseling or therapy. Um, meeting regularly with a clinician and an outpatient treatment, um, and if someone needs it, even inpatient care in the form of detox or residential treatment. Um, Boulder Care is a completely virtual clinic providing long-term support and treatment through telehealth for substance use disorders, and by providing care virtually, we can break down some of those barriers to care like travel, time away from family, and even stigma, just like you mentioned. I think what's important is that our model of care at Boulder is really grounded in compassion and empathy. And we focus on quickly connecting people to care um, and the care that they need. Um, I think our patients feel that from the very first time that they connect with us, either a phone call or their anonymous chat on our website um, to ultimately hopefully celebrating milestones with them. Um, and those things, you know, it might be something like a month without using or a year without using, and we can celebrate those together. Um, our treatment plan is really tailored to an individual's needs, um, but generally will include regular video visits with a clinician that's done securely through our app, um, communication with and support from a care advocate, and then coaching from a certified peer coach, someone with lived experience with addiction to help guide recovery.